Hello everyone, Hyper here. In past tiers, I've done videos where I talked about whether or not I believed Unholy or Frost would be better for that specific upcoming tier. This video will be kind of similar, but I also wanted to talk about what the process is in determining what specs we are going to play in the first few days or even first week, first two weeks of a new raid on progress because only a few people really have to deal with this and I only learned about this once I started raiding higher end where I kind of had to come up with builds on my own, decide what I'm going to play on my own um, and I didn't have external resources to rely upon too much. So in this video I'm going to talk about whether or not I believe Frost or Unholy will be better and even within that if I believe the Ice Cap build which has re recently gotten a lot of hype on certain discords or forums and whatnot um, or the standard bread of Sindragosa build will continue to reign king. And then for Unholy, whether or not the Army of the Damned build, which is also going to surface next uh, tier, or the standard Unholy Frenzy build will remain to be better. If you're looking for a definite answer of like, this is 100% what you should be playing next tier, this is not the video for it. This is going to be a lot of speculation um, and explain the process that I go through whenever deciding these things. Whenever deciding what to play in a new tier, there's typically four things that we consider. First one is whether or not a specific spec is going to get buffed or nerfed in the next patch. Second thing would be fight design. For example, Old Deer fight design catered heavily towards Frost DK, while um, BOD fight design was a little bit better for Unholy. The next thing that we consider is going to be Sims. Um, PTR sims can be kind of unreliable sometimes, or not even unreliable, misleading is a better word and I will talk about that more in depth later. And then the last thing that we consider is the gear from the new raid. So what trinkets drop, what Ezrai drops, um, and everything along those lines, because that can have an effect and an impact on which spec you end up playing. The first step in this process for Death Knight in particular is fairly straightforward because none of the specs are getting buffed or nerfed. The only thing getting changed is essences. And within essences, we have CLF getting nerfed, we have Vision of Perfection getting buffed, and we have World Vein Resonance getting buffed. Everything else is pretty much uh, standard. And then we're also getting three new essences in the new tier. However, I'm not going to talk about them too much because most of them don't seem that great to use as a major essence. Since both Unholy and Frost DK used a CLF Major in Eternal Palace, it's kind of a wash. Both of them are getting nerfed. However, Unholy has a better alternative in Vision of Perfection, whereas Frost needs to fall back on Blood of the Enemy. Um, and on certain fight lengths, Blood of the Enemy is actually better than CLF. However, in general, it was deemed weaker in Eternal Palace. Second thing is fight design. And this is a lot more difficult to answer because there is typically not an overarching fight design to a raid. Each individual fight tends to cater more towards one spec than the other. And then you decide what to play based on which spec is catered towards more within the raid. For example, if the first three or four bosses cater towards Unholy and then the later bosses cater towards Frost, you're better off playing Frost the entire tier because those later bosses are always more difficult and that's where you will be spending more time. And if the opposite is true, then you will be playing Unholy. Within Nylotha, overall, there is not a definite answer that I can give whether Unholy or Frost will be better. Um, there are definitely a few bosses that I feel like cater towards Unholy and a few that cater towards Frost. But ultimately, what's going to decide what I'm going to play is what's better on the last two bosses. Um, and at this point, we don't really know much about Nazoth Mythic. Um, so until we see that, I'm not set in stone as in what I'm going to play for the majority of the raid. Moving on to the third step of this process, we have Sims. And arguably, these are the best resources for deciding what you're going to play for the majority of players. Sims have gotten really accurate in being able to predict about how much damage you're able to do and you can kind of cater them to your character and you can figure that out. However, Sims do have a few drawbacks. 
uh, because you can't take them at face value. And what do I mean by that? Whenever a new tier comes out, um, they typically put together a list called a profile for every single spec that is meant to mimic what is the maximum DPS that specific spec can do. And this is always on a single target fight over five minutes. And it always tries to use the best in slot gear that you have um, or that you can put together in that specific tier. In next tier, this will include items such as the Mechagon ring set for DK, um, the weapon from Nazoth, and also Azrite pieces from the last two bosses on Mythic, which are higher item level. Even just mentioning that, if you've done Sims for yourself, you can see an issue straight away. When you step foot into Mythic for the first time, you're not going to have all of the Mythic Azerite pieces. You're not going to have the best weapon from the last boss. You might or might not have the two-piece ring set from Mechagon. You might or might not have the trinkets that drop on Mythic um, or Mythic Plus, whatever is best for your spec. And then another thing uh, that's also along these lines is neck level and essences. New sims, when new essences are introduced, like we have in next patch, assume that you're going to have level 80 neck, and they assume that you're going to have all rank 3 essences, which I don't believe you're able to get the rank 3 essences um, before going into mythic. So what is a realistic best case? For example, as an unholy DK, your realistic best case sim would include Carapace and Nazoth uh, as right pieces from Heroic, and they would include a mythic Vexiona chest if you're optimizing for the last two bosses. As Frost, it would include a heroic Nazoth helm and mythic Skitcher shoulders and mythic Vexiona chest. That is the best case setup that you can have when you get to progging on the last boss, which is arguably the most important one. And for both those specs, the best case scenario for weapons is getting 475 eye level weapons um, out of early mythic bosses. So as you can see, there's already a big discrepancy between our theoretical best for the tier versus our best that we can do during progress because the available items that you have during progress is not the same as the items you have two months into farm once you've killed every boss uh, you know, a bunch of times. And going into Nihilotha, we have even another layer added to this through corruption items. You might be able to roll the best corruption items. You might have mid-tier corruption items. You might have gotten really unlucky and gotten bad corruption items. Um, if you are progging mythic bosses early on, it is most likely that you're going to have average average corruption items at best. Um, and obviously that can vary from player to player. So for me, the biggest thing that I take into consideration is what is the best DPS I can do in a realistic item set. Now the last step of this process is of course gearing. And this is another thing that is fairly unpredictable um because gearing tends to be somewhat volatile since trinkets typically end up either getting buffed or nerfed the first week of a patch or they remain unchanged and they're just unusable eternal palace was probably one of the best trinket tiers that we've had this entire expansion um with font of power being so powerful for basically every single class and spec um, Razor Coral being so strong on numerous melee DPS, and also Ink Pod being a very good trinket on several melee DPS. Whereas previous tiers, we kind of had weaker trinkets. And going into Nihilota, it does seem to be the case that we're getting somewhat weaker trinkets. Even if not weaker in performance, definitely weaker in design and synergy. For melee DPS in particular, the trinkets from Nihilota tend to be passive trinkets that will proc you crit or proc you haste, um, or trinkets that simply deal X amount of damage, like Cyclotronic Beam, for example. And those trinkets can be very hit or miss. Sometimes they're great, like Cyclotronic Beam from Mechagon, and sometimes they're just awful and you can't use them because they simply do no damage. If you think about the trinket from Uldir off of the last boss that spawned the little tentacles. 
No one used it ever, even though it was from the last boss, because it simply just did no damage. So passive trinkets are typically at a disadvantage especially in a meta where unused trinkets and stacking multiple cooldowns together can be so powerful. When looking at gearing alone, Unholy seems to be favored for Mythic Progress because you're able to get higher eye level Azrite on average because two of our best pieces are from the last boss. So before you even step foot into Mythic, you can have two Azrite pieces that are almost Mythic eye level. Well, technically Mythic eye level. Um, with weapons, it's kind of a draw because you can have a weapon from Nazoth as Unholy and a weapon from Carapace of Nazoth as Frost. For trinkets, it does seem to favor Unholy more because there's no strong unused trinkets that give you stats from the raid. So Frost DK is going to either rely on still using Font of Power from the previous tier along with Coral or use Font of Power from the previous tier along with a new PvP trinket, either a badge um, or the versatility on use trinket, but badge is typically stronger since it does scale with Pillar of Frost. For Unholy, this is not the case, however. Font of Power is a fairly strong trinket even for Unholy, but it was not our favorite trinket. We used it because it was overpowered. It gave you so many stats, but it's a two minute cooldown trinket. Unholy does not have a single two minute cooldown. Um, in Eternal Palace and previously, our cooldown was a minute and 30 seconds, and an army obviously 8 minutes. Whereas going into next tier, where we are most likely going to be using Vision of Perfection, our cooldown is going to be somewhere around a minute 15 seconds. For this reason, trinkets that will just simply deal damage to your target, um, or trinkets that are passive proc trinkets that just give you haste sometimes or give you crit sometimes, anything along those lines, are, tend to be better for Unholy than they are for Frost. The other major thing to consider next tier is going to be Corruption. Corruption can basically single-handedly decide what you will play. If your character rolled a bunch of haste corruption items, you're most likely going to do way more damage as Unholy. Whereas if you ended up rolling crit or mastery uh, corruption items, then you will most likely do more damage as Frost. Now within the two specs, there's two sub-builds, like I mentioned in the beginning. There's Ice Cap, Breath of Sindragosa, Army of the Damned, and Unholy Frenzy. The first two builds I wanted to talk about is Breath of Sindragosa versus Ice Cap. In best gear, Ice Cap will most likely do more damage than Breath of Sindragosa does on a 5 minute fight. However, Breath of Sindragosa has some more serious implications that people tend to not consider when just looking at a sim. Ice Cap is very good at just dealing sustained damage to one target, uh, with very little cleave in generally. Whereas Breath of Syndragosa does decent damage on single target, but once you start tossing in a few extra targets, uh, if you think of like Zakul or Queen Ashara, Breath of Syndragosa tends to shine. So if the fight design caters towards just pure single target, then yeah, Ice Cap might be better. But if the fight ends up having a strong, or a part where you need strong cooldowns to carry that part, because you need to make a damage check, or you need to kill an add on time, um, or anything along those lines, Frost uh, with Breath of Syndragosa will most likely be better to use, even if overall the entire fight, you might do less damage. And this is not to talk down Ice Cap in any way, shape, or form. Ice Cap is a really good build if the fight caters towards it. If the fight doesn't have super important damage checks, um, or the fight doesn't have substantial amount of cleave, Ice Cap will most likely outshine Breath of Syndragosa. We don't know yet. Now moving on to Army of the Damned versus Unholy Frenzy. Now the reason Army of the Damned is going to make an appearance is because Unholy will most likely use Vision of Perfection as our major essence, which means that our Apocalypse cooldown is going to be reduced under the cooldown of Unholy Frenzy. So it essentially desyncs them. Um, in the previous two tiers, both times our Apocalypse was a standard 1 minute 30 second cooldown and our Unholy Frenzy was a minute and 20 seconds. So you simply delayed your Frenzy 10 seconds to sync them back up, uh, so your Magus could deal more damage because it had more haste. Next year, however, 
if your Unholy Frenzy is going to be a longer cooldown than your Apocalypse, and you're using multiple Magus traits, it will most likely not be worth running Unholy Frenzy. It's better off to just take Army of the Damned, because that gives you even more CDR on your Apocalypse, and it gives you CDR on your Army of the Dead. So you're able to get 2 to 3 armies per fight, and you're able to get your Apocalypse to a fairly short cooldown. So what does this mean for Unholy? Well, if your Army of the Damned build does more damage overall, and the fight doesn't have a specific burn phase, then it's going to be the go-to build. However, if the fight does have a strict burn phase, where you need to deal X amount of damage in, let's say, 30 seconds or 40 seconds, then Unholy Frenzy with CLF might still be better to use, just because it provides more damage over that short period of time, uh, even though you are losing damage over the entire fight. So, the bottom line, which spec am I going to play going into week 1 of Mythic Nihilotha? I have no idea. It's going to depend mostly on what corruption items I get and how lucky I get in our heroic clears. That, for me, that is what's going to determine which spec I end up playing. Um, and then, besides that, obviously, which fights I'm in for and which spec tends to favor um, that fight. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope this provided you with some insight on the complex problem that is deciding which spec to play every single tier. Um, and if you have any questions, any suggestions, if you have any theory crafting stuff about DK that you want to share, you can leave it in the comment section below, or you can join my Discord where we talk about this kind of stuff every single day. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.